Welcome back to another GeekWalk video. In today's video, I'm taking you over in as much detail as possible how to build a gaming PC or any PC for that matter for 2015. Time codes will be in the description below, so if you do wish to skip or revisit certain components or sections of this video, feel free to do so. Although I do recommend you watch this video once through without interruptions to make sure every basis is covered. This video will apply to pretty much all part configurations and great value balanced gaming PC builds can be found on the channel. So make sure to subscribe and check my other great content out after this video. So let's start with tools and equipment. So all you really need is a Phillips head screwdriver, although a multi-bit screwdriver and or one with magnetic tip is helpful for retrieving drop screws poking around in your case. I also highly recommend an anti-static wrist strap to dissipate static, especially if you're working in a room with carpet. One thing I also find incredibly helpful is a magnetic parts tray to store and easily organise all your screws. UK and US links to all products mentioned in today's video will of course be in the description below. So now the build. But before the build, build prep. What do you need to do before you build? To protect against static electricity, plug your power supply into the wall socket and if your wall socket has a switch, turn it on. But make sure your power supply is turned off. The switch is normally at the back of the unit. Having your power supply turned off is imperative as to not electrocute yourself. This creates an easy, convenient way to ground yourself. If you have chosen to use an anti-static wrist strap, which I highly recommend, simply clip it to the PSU or do what I like to do. Screw in your power supply into the case with the four included screws, very self-explanatory, and clip the crocodile clip from the anti-static wrist strap, which can also be placed around the ankle for convenience to a metal part of the case. If you have chosen not to use an anti-static wrist strap, which in some cases will mean part manufacturers will be more reluctant to honour your warranty, then simply make sure you touch the outer casing of the PSU frequently to ground yourself. Now the build. We start with the motherboard. Find an anti-static place to work such as a desk, ideally in a room with a hard floor and not carpet and lay your motherboard down on the box it came in and not the bag it came in. Do not use any of the anti-static bags that any of your components came in for any part of the build. That is an imperative step. For both AMD and Intel CPUs make sure to only handle them by the edges and none of either the pins on the or the contact points on the bottom of the CPU or on the socket. You do not want to touch any of these. Next find the golden triangle on the corner of your CPU and align it with the triangle on the socket on your motherboard. This is where it differs for AMD and Intel CPUs. For AMD, C for AMD CPUs align as previously stated with the retention arm lifted up and the pins on the CPU should simply slot right into the aligning holes on the socket. No force is needed at all all you do not need you do not want to bend any of the pins under any circumstance if it aligns properly and the pins have slotted in nicely lower the retention arm and clip it under the notch for intel cpus align the triangles also previously stated and remove the plastic cover from the hold down plate you can leave this to the side for the moment then drop the cpu into place and make sure it is aligned properly you do not want to bend any of the pins on the motherboard socket so do not touch them it should align properly, ISO give it a quick wiggle to make sure it's properly aligned and lower the retention arm. This would also bring the plate down with it. Make sure that the edge of the plate slots under the screw on the motherboard and lower the retention arm or arms depending on the socket down and slot it under the notch. More force is needed on Intel sockets and you may hear some unpleasant crunching noises. This is fully normal and as long as the CPU is perfectly aligned you will have absolutely no problems here. CPU coolers vary quite a lot. The stock coolers for both AMD and Intel should come pre-applied thermal paste. For Intel CPUs, align the four push-down clips to the appropriate holes on the motherboard, then clip these clips into the hole in a cross pattern going diagonally as to make sure everything aligns correctly. For AMD stock coolers, it can vary, so you may need to refer to the manual, but for most, align the CPU cooler and slot the first metal hook over the plastic clip, followed by the second with the hold down bracket. Then clip or push over the CPU cooler bracket and the CPU cooler should settle and rest down into place. For aftermarket coolers or stock coolers without pre applied thermal paste, create an uncut grain of rice size line of thermal paste or a slightly larger cut grain of rice size for Intel's 2011 V3 enthusiast larger socket design onto the metal top of the CPU. For aftermarket coolers you will need to refer to the manual uh, which is included with, 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 that, um, with that component or search up a video or a uh, web page guide on the internet if that's more your thing. Next, the RAM, the easiest component to install. If you're not populating all the DIMM slots on your motherboard, refer to the manual to see which to populate. Then find the notch on the DIMM and align it to the notch on the slot on your motherboard. And with the clips on the DIMM slots apply, open, apply even pressure to each side of the RAM. It will clip into the motherboard and the clips on the DIMM slots will follow down, returning to their original position, creating a reassuring click sound. 
Next, we're going to move the entire motherboard assembly into the case. Before this, clip the included IO shield into the case, apply even pressure to each corner and it will clip in nicely. These can be sharp, so be careful as to not cut yourself. The audio connectors will be at the bottom with a standard vertical motherboard orient orientation and on the left hand side with a standard horizontal motherboard orientation. You'll also need to install the motherboard standoffs in more premium cases, they may come pre installed, but otherwise, hold your motherboard above the standoff spots for reference and hand tighten them in the appropriate places. You can use a tool for this, but I find hand tightening them is often sufficient. Then hover your entire motherboard assembly over again making sure everything is adequately aligned and the IO through the IO shield and screw the appropriate matching screws, i.e. the ones that fit, through the holes on the motherboard and through into the standoffs. You guessed it, in a cross pattern. When that's all done you can take a sip of Diet Coke and admire your healthiness and hard work. Well that isn't exactly necessary but a can of coke definitely does help and keep you well hydrated. Next is the first bit of wiring. Yay! The first 4 or 8 pin motherboard power connector. Your power supply will have it as an 8 pin connector but if your motherboard only takes 4 of the 8, split it into 2 blocks, plugging one in and leaving the other one unclipped. In some case scenarios you may want to run the cable before motherboard installation, so consider that before you build and install the motherboard. Next is the 20 plus 4 pin motherboard power cable. It has a 12 by 2 pin layer and is easy to spot. The biggest connector from the PSU with the colourful wires connecting to the pins. Align the clip on the notch on the huge 20 plus 4 pin connector on your motherboard and slot it in. It can require a bit of pressure, just make sure not to force it and flex your motherboard too much. This is the only bit of wiring for now, a little more later. Next is storage. Different cases use different methods from the one on this case, the Core 1100 from Fractal Design, using a vertical bracket with rubber, vibration dampening washers to others with tallest sleds and unique screw in points. Just refer to your case manual if you're unsure. Now more wiring. Yay! First is the SATA data cable. This will transfer data from your drive to the motherboard in the PC. Grab the included cable with your motherboard and plug one end into the motherboard and the other into the drive, i.e. the SSD, solid state drive or HDD, hard drive disk, all components you can learn more about with the links in the description. The connector will only go in one way so don't force any connections and use your common sense. If using more than one drive you may want to be mindful of what cable is plugged into which number connector on the motherboard and which cable goes to which drive, just for later Windows, in Windows installation reference. Next is SATA power. This cable comes from your power supply. If you're using a non-modular PSU, it will already be connected, much like the 20 plus 4 pin motherboard and 4 or 8 pin CPU power connectors. If you're using a semi-modular or full line modular unit, you may need to find the appropriate cable included with your PSU and plug in the appropriate space on your PSU. Then plug the other SATA power end into the drive. It may only go in one way, so be mindful. It will also not click in place and can be a bit stiff. Just other factors to keep in mind. Now I ask for 20 seconds of your time to help support me making this tutorial. You're almost there building your new killer gaming PC and you want some games, right? If so, G2A can provide you with great deals, so use my referral link, the first in the description below, to get some great deals. I also have a guide and ebook on Google Play which helps with PC parts, the second link in the description below, definitely worth a read for around a dollar. Now back to the tutorial, thank you for your 20 seconds there. Next is GPU or GPUs. Pull back the clip on the PCI slot and remove the PCI brackets on your case. These will either bend out or unscrew. Click the GPU into place and the clip will give a reassuring snap or click. If your GPU requires extra power, most do now and again nowadays, connect either the 6 or 8 pin connector or connectors from your power supply. If you want parts that you know will be compatible then check the vast array of PC builds on my channel and make sure to subscribe. These plug in like any other power cable with a small clip on one side. These will easily fit in with the odd wiggle, so if you fasten it in, something isn't quite right. When using AMD GPUs, if you are using more than one, it will automatically connect to both uh, via the motherboard. If using Intel GPUs, you will need to use an SLI bridge, often included with your graphics card. This simply clips on, much like your graphics card will clip into your motherboard. Next is the last bit of wiring. Yay! But it's the worst, so don't get too excited. It's front panel connectors. This is another bit of wiring you may want to do before a certain part is installed, in this case the GPU, as it can get in the way and interfere. Unfortunately I can't quite hold your hand on this step, just refer to your motherboard manual and make sure the positive and negative cables go in the right way. The block style connectors only go in one way such as HD audio, USB 2 and USB 3 and are either keyed or have a pin blocked out, so don't force it. Be gentle, this is often the root of many problems, just be careful because this is what connects your IO on the front or the top of your case to your PC, i.e. the power button, the audio jacks and the USB ports. 
And that's pretty much it. Don't go anywhere yet though. You may have noticed no optical drive installation. This is by no means necessary and if you would like to learn how to create a bootable Windows install flash drive, the link will be, yep, you guessed it, in the description below. If you do wish to install an optical drive, however, make sure to purchase a case with a 5 quarter inch bay and screw in appropriately using the same connection method as storage drives with SATA power and data cables. The last step is to turn your system on and boot into the motherboard BIOS. No windows needed for this, and check it recognises the CPU, RAM and the RAM's clock speed, such as 1600 or 1866 MHz. If all look good, check CPU temps aren't too high, they should idle around the 50 Celsius mark depending on your cooler, and it recognises the dedicated GPU if you are using one. The chances are you will want to install an OS, such as Windows, so that's your next step. Then all that's left to do is install drivers. Do not use the included discs, instead install them off the internet, or download them from another PC and shove them on a memory stick, moving them over as to make sure you get the latest versions. You can retrieve these from the manufacturer's official websites. If your PC will not turn on, then check all the front panel connectors are incorrectly, positives and negatives people, and then make sure the switch on the back of your PSU is on, along with the display outputs plugged into your GPU if you are using one rather than your motherboard. And that's it. Make sure to like and subscribe and help me on my journey to achieve my dream of a great tech channel, able to review, unbox and benchmark the latest products. If you want to support me, you can use my G2A link to get great deals on games and buy my ebook for around a dollar on the Google Play Store. If you thought this tutorial was good and you'd like to donate, drop a comment below and I'll be sure to sort a method or a link out. Any questions you have, I am more than happy to help, so leave them below and I'll try my very best to reply. If it gets too hostile down there, I'm always on Twitter at Geekwatt, so drop me a tweet, drop me a line and I'll be sure to reply to you. Once again, thank you very much for watching and remember to like and please do subscribe and we'll definitely see you in the next Geekwatt video.